everybody. This is Ben Johnson from the Particle Accelerator podcast, where we talk to forward thinking technology leaders and uh, business leaders and um, ask them how they leverage technology to accelerate business growth and value. I'm here today with Noah. Noah, why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah, so my name is Noah Brocious. I'm the president of Capital Fund One. Uh, we're an asset based private lender um, based here in Scottsdale. Um, we lend money to real estate investors, builders, and developers uh, for real estate projects in Arizona, Colorado, Texas, Tennessee, and Georgia. Um, our, our primary focus is uh, single family residential fix and flip loans, uh, but, but we'll lend on commercial assets, multifamily um, land, and we do some ground up construction as well. Awesome. Cool. Well, that's a, it's a, it's refreshing for us on the podcast here to talk to the money guy, the, the guy yeah. behind the projects. Um, okay. So this will be, this will be great. So what technology innovations are you betting on to drive your business growth? Yeah. So obviously, you know, with AI kind of taking over the, the world these days, um, we're, we're looking closely at, at things that we can do just to, you know, help, help make our vi uh, business a little bit more efficient and, and leverage, um, all the, all the tools that are out there. Um, you know, particularly what we're working on right now is, um, you know, we've, we've been lending, um, and, and doing this business for about 15 years. Um, so we've got a lot of data on, you know, loans that we've funded, um, you know, loan requests that we've received that we haven't funded. Um, so we're in the, we're in the process of, of working with a company, uh, to create a data warehouse, um, uh, just to be able to, to leverage all that data to, to help us make, um, you know, more quick and better decisions. Um, oh, that's we all, awesome. yeah, we all saw, you know, based on Zillow's failures that, that a computer cannot, uh, accurately value real estate. Um, you know, maybe, maybe at some point, um, we'll, we'll be able to click a button and, and value real estate. But, but at this point, you know, we're still using humans to, to value the real estate. We're just trying to leverage that data to, like I said, be a little bit more efficient and, and help us make better decisions. Yeah. And not, not to nerd out too much, but were there any specific tools that you've incorporated, uh, in terms of building your data warehouse, or can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, I mean, you know, at this point, we're we're utilizing the the developer um, that that we you know we went through a process and, and interviewed a handful of of different developers um, to to determine you know who we thought might be best, and we found found one that you know fortunately had some experience um, in in real estate in our space. Um, so you know, at this point, we're we're really you know leaning on them uh, for for guidance. Um, so I wouldn't say there's necessarily any particular tools, uh, that, that we've used yet, but I think once we have that all set up, um, then, then we'll definitely, definitely yeah. be looking yeah. for up tools to leverage. That's cool. Has that vision been realized that the, that you can use some of this data that you have access to from your 15 year history? Have you kind of realized the result yet or is still in the works? Like you're excited no. about what it could do? Yeah, we're we're excited about what it can do. I mean, we've we've done a, a lot of you know data analysis, um, and it really done it more manually uh, than than anything. So we'll we'll look every month at uh, um, loans that paid off through a sale uh, to a third party, and then we'll we'll look at you know what what we estimated that after repair of completed value to be uh, when we underwrote the loan and, and originated the loan versus what it actually sold for. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, so we've done that, you know, manually in the past, but, but we're excited to, to automate that um, portion of it. You know, we're also going to look closely at, you know, how long it took a, a borrower to uh, complete a project, you know, once they put it on the market, how quickly they were able to sell it. Um, so, so looking at those, you know, particular projects that we funded, but then also utilizing the, the data 
we have on on the real estate market in general just to look at particular areas you know zip codes pockets to to identify areas where you know real estate is is selling a little bit more quickly uh maybe inventory is lower so just to help us identify better areas that that we feel we should be lending in yeah that's really cool yeah it can be like uh i don't know about scottsdale but in the dallas area you could be you know, a couple blocks over and it's a completely different market than it is, you know, in the subdivision with the giant pool um, yep. in the middle of it. Yeah. Um, there can be kind of these swinging gaps, especially in the older parts of Dallas. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. Like kind of. Yeah. So you just, yeah. And, and that's, that's one thing we're, we're focused on. We, when we open a new market, we, our first hire is somebody that has, you know, uh, extensive local, knowledge um and experience so just to be able to identify yep you cross cross the street and it's you know may may be a stone's throw away but it's just a different different neighborhood yeah um what would you say the most significant gaps between your ambitions and uh and just the realities of today um you know i think at, at this point you know obviously you know it's not a completed project so you know we're, we're cautiously optimistic that um that it'll be successful so it's really just you know seeing what the finished product is and you know not, nothing's ever perfect in general but especially not when you complete it so so really yeah. just you know going through that process working through the kinks you know making changes uh so that it, it suits our needs best yeah is the uh is the reality of the interest rate being higher like how is that impacting your business just kind of walking stepping away from digital a little yeah. bit yeah how's that impacting you and how are you guys overcoming kind of that reality yeah. of like it's harder to loan money yeah no i mean there's there's definitely pros and cons to it i mean on the on the pro side um we've we've been able to, to increase the the rates that we charge um a little bit you know it's not not as significant as as mortgage rates um you know so sometimes we'll have borrowers complain oh you, you increased your interest rates and my response is always well you know when we made that loan to you two years ago mortgage rates were three percent now they're seven you know we right. we were charging ten percent back then now we're charging eleven and a half to to twelve percent so you know proportionally we, we really didn't increase that much um on the on the con side as far as interest rate goes interest rates go you know obviously the higher the rates are the, the tougher it is for for buyers to qualify mm -hmm. um the affordability issue is has just been created especially after that that big run-up of of real estate values um so you know there's not as many buyers qualifying so our borrowers are you know that that are uh, going in uh improving houses and then uh reselling them to you know ultimately a homeowner they don't have as large of a of a buyer pool um so so there's fewer buyers out there but you know inventory has has remained low again partly because of of such a run-up in interest rates um uh, because you know who in their right mind is gonna gonna sell property with a three percent rate and, and trade into a seven percent interest rate you know right now unless they really have to so you know it's kind of been referred to as the the golden handcuff effect so um demand has has been down um just because not as many people can qualify and there's not as large of a buyer pool but um supply has has remained low so so supply and demand is you know not not like it was when the market was crazy but it's still you know it's still in in most markets that we're in it's it's still a seller's market because there's there is more demand than supply um so you know interest rates have been a little bit of a of, of a pro and a con but you know fortunately we've we've stayed busy um you know there's there's still a lot of opportunity out there that that our borrowers are taking advantage of that's cool yeah. um how do you align uh, i'll ask this in two ways uh, just so we can get a most out of your expertise but how do you align technology roadmaps with your overall business strategy um yeah answer that one first 
Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, we're, we're really focused on, uh, trying to be more efficient in, in everything that we do, you know, um, as, as we grow or as we have grown, we've, we've added, you know, a, a lot of new employees, um, you know, because we've, we've had a need for that, but, but right now we're, we're really focused on looking at every different, um, you know, aspect of technology that we use. Uh, just to to look and see how we can get a little bit more efficient, um, so that you know we'll, we'll obviously continue to add add people as as needed, but maybe not quite as uh, at the rapid pace that that we have over you know the past three or four years. I mean, four years ago we probably had fifteen or twenty employees. Now we have about eighty five. Right. Uh, so so yeah, don't don't necessarily want to you know, quadruple or four X, uh, the employee count every, every four years. So, so yeah, really sure. just look at all the different, um, technology tools that we have just to, just to figure out how we can get a little bit more efficient. Yeah. So one of the things we do is you're probably familiar with the periodic table of, of, uh, elements in, you know, old chemistry textbook, right. Yep. Um, we love that as a metaphor. What we do is we kind of look at like, CRM tools or what are you doing for workflow management? Here's some other things we've seen other people do. And we kind of lay out a map of like, what are the IT tools, the monthly subscription types of softwares that you're using? And then um, we, once we kind of figure out what that map is, maybe there's some holes here or there. Um, a lot of times people will even have two of a certain kind of thing. And right. one part of the business is using that and another part of the business is using that. So that's at least really cool to see on the map and, and like be aware of. Yep. Um, but like then that. we overlay like the user experience on top of that. Mm -hmm. How is the user traversing through um, these tools or a couple of these tools to get the clear understanding of the process? And yep. we do some asset value mapping, um, just around like that experience and if that's flowing um, and then we figure out, you know, are there customizations that are needed? You know, how can we uh, kind of configure partner or build um, advantages within that existing um, that existing map? Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And and, and yeah, because a lot of times you, you know, once you actually do a deep dive into, into things, you realize, you know, you've got too many tools and and maybe you can um eliminate one or two and 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 utilize others you know a, a little bit better you know uh just to just to get things more efficient yeah what lessons have you learned from um tech initiatives that have failed to deliver expected value or what lessons have you learned uh, even if they're not about tech or digital but like yeah yeah i mean we've uh, we, about four, four and a half, five years ago, we, um, we actually started working with a, a developer to develop some, uh, in-house proprietary software that, that really helped us with, um, you know, at the, at the onset, it was, it was really just an underwriting tool, um, just to help us, uh, you know, more, more accurately value real estate. So we have, um, data feeds with with the local mls's that we're in um so so going through through that project i mean i think we you know we kind of knew what we wanted and you know a, a lot of times you start something and you, you you don't really know exactly what you want and it's been it's been a successful project but i think in hindsight we probably should have taken a little bit more time to think through, you know, kind of what the, what the future state uh, really uh, looked like or what we wanted it to look like mm -hmm. uh, because there were some things we, we could have done differently. So, so I think as we start new projects, especially on the technology side, um, we're, we're taking a little bit more time now to, to really sit down and say, okay, let's, let's make sure, we know what, what we really want to, to build this the right way from the beginning. Yeah. We also usually take customers through like a high fidelity wireframe process just to make sure like, is this really what you want? 
Um, so then when we go build it, I mean, iterating with working software is frustrating and expensive yep. um, because, oh, no, we really wanted this. And then that change from what might have been the understanding initially to the new understanding is where the bugs kind of start to creep up a bit. Um, so we love uh, we, we we love our, our resident designer to like really clarify, you know, those things. Um, before we before we build too much but um that sounds cool and so you're still um iterating on that in-house software or how is that Uh, how's that going i mean we've we've really kind of gotten it to a point where um you know we we feel like we've we've gotten you know out of it what what we need to get out of it so it's it more or less fully developed at at this point um so so yeah now we're just because that's 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 the system that really stores all the data. So, you know, in, in hindsight, it, it would have been nice to, you know, kind of have that, that data warehouse set up um, where we could utilize that, that data to, to help us make decisions like, uh, like we're doing on the, on the project that, that we're currently working on. Yeah. Awesome. Um, how do you, uh, how do you cultivate a culture of innovation and digital fluency in your organization? Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's really just going to our employees, um, and, and figuring out, you know, what, what gaps there might be. I mean, we do, you know, periodic, uh, technology surveys just to get feedback, um, from our employees. Um, and, and also, you know, uh, encourage them to, to use the, the different tools out there. I mean, chat GPT and, you know, things like that. And we've had, we've had some employees, uh, really come up with, uh, with some really interesting tools that, that they can use. So, so yeah, we're, we're always encouraging employees to, you know, play around with what's out there. And, and if you feel like you have, uh, something that that makes sense then they they present it to their manager to the team and um if if we feel like it it makes sense then we'll have other people implement that as well that's cool yeah that's awesome um what would you say like what's a shared experience or um something that you would uh i used to ask about advice i don't think people yeah. really like to be should on but uh, yeah. a shared experience that you'd share with um peers or people early in their digital career or early in in your market yeah i mean i think i think a lot of times uh people can get enamored with with all the tools that are out there um so and and we've you know we're we're tinkerers we like you know trying to make things better um all the time and you know every different aspect of the business so I would say, you know, don't get too distracted by by shiny objects out there. Um, you know, it's it's good to, to test things out, but all of a sudden, if you wake up one day and kind of like we were talking about, you have fifteen or, or twenty different, you know, tools or systems that that you're working with, it it can complicate things. So, um, so yeah, I would just say, and and, and we've learned through it, um, just don't get uh, don't get too many systems and, and don't get yeah. too, too many different things out there. Oh yeah. In the tech space, this happens all the time where the desire to use the tool is greater than the need for the right. tool or, uh, and then, you know, you just, Oh, I really want to use this new thing that everybody's talking about. Right. And then, um, you know, do you, do you guys use a process for setting goals? Do you, are you like, like smart, are you a smart goals guy or an OKRs guy? Yeah, we, we run, we, we work with a company that runs kind of on the EOS, um, system. Okay. Um, so we, yeah, we, we work kind of, you know, using that model, um, and, you know, have our, you know, weekly, monthly, quarterly meetings and, you know, periodically re relook at goals and, and, and reset those. Yeah, that's awesome. I find that that's where like that process and then what problem are we really trying to solve right. is the better way for the tool. Oh, okay. Now we need a tool, you know, we right. need to go hire 15 people and our, our recruiting process is kind of rugged. Okay. Maybe we need a tool to help ma- us manage that. Um, right. 
And we yeah. live in this wonderful age of like great purposeful um, kind of SaaS tools where if there's like a specific need, you can find the tool for that need um, rather than, um, you know, have some customers that have gotten way over their skis with Salesforce and, yep. you know, big uh, kind of solve it all products like that yeah. um, rather than what you're suggesting, which is really wise. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. The tool we use, it's called metronome. Um, it's, it's nice that, you know, just everybody within the company has, has their, you know, four to six metrics that, that they're looking at. Um, and, and within that, uh, system, it, it helps us manage our meetings. And, you know, one of the, one of the processes is the, the IDS process of, you know, identify, discuss, and then solve. Um, and I think mm -hmm. what, what we've learned through implementing that is, um, you know, in the past we've said, okay, we've, we've identified a problem and, you know, we go directly to solve it. Like, okay, here's a problem. Let's solve it. But now we're, we're spending more time on, you know, discussing it, fearing it, figuring out, okay, is this, is this just an isolated incident? Is it, is it really something that we, we do need to solve for? Um, and, and really spending that time to, to discuss it um, and, and, and identify if we really do, is there something to solve for, or, or, or is it something that, that we don't necessarily need to worry about? Cause we've, you know, in the past and in hindsight, we've, we've made some, you know, snap decisions on, oh, we need to change this. And, you know, if we, if we would have spent the time to, uh, to really discuss it and, and think through it, it, it may not have been really anything that we needed to change. Yeah. Yeah. We help uh, a couple of customers with big system integrations as a result of a merger and acquisition. And it was kind of like this initial urge to just migrate everything over, consolidate for the sake of consolidation. Mm -hmm. um, and as we use a similar framework as what you're recommending with the IDS framework, we really resolved that like, hey, no, that group could have some things that they really like to have. And then this group um, could like, we don't necessarily need to have this rush to consolidate everything. Um, yeah. Maybe that's a long term goal, but uh, yeah. we also want to uh, make everybody successful in their own P&L driving. Right. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Um, so just to wrap up here, any picks like a book that you've maybe been into, uh, a new product that you found, a uh, new health tip, anything, any any kind of picks or top of mind recommendations that you have? Yeah, I mean, I one of the recent books that, that I read that I really liked is the 10x is easier than 2x. Um, so so really just going through and you know, identifying the things that, that you really should be working on. Um, you know, we all are, are guilty of, you know, just maybe coming into the office and opening up email and, you know, spending two hours fiddling around with email um, or, you know, kind of doing things that, that really don't, don't add value or, or, or that you shouldn't be doing. So, you know, after I read that book, I just kind of had a running list. Anytime I'd catch myself, doing something that I know I really shouldn't be doing. I'd, I'd put that on the list. So, um, so that was, uh, that, that was a really good book. And, and yeah, I mean, this, you know, health, I could, I could go on for, for hours. I'm, I'm a little, a little obsessed with, uh, you know, just all the, all the different things out there, you know, exercising hot and cold, you know, I'm, I'm really into, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Peter Atia and, and Andrew Huberman. I'm, I'm pretty excited. I get to go, uh, I'm in YPO and, and they're having a, you know, kind of a health summit out in LA in, in April. And, and those two guys are going to be speakers um, at that be, because there's just, there's so many things that, that, that we can be doing to, you know, kind of biohack or, you know, really improve, you know, our, our health and, and energy. Um, so, so yeah, that's like, I said, I'm, I can, I'm super, I'm super into it too. Um, yeah. I'm like got the cold plunge out in the backyard next to yep. the sauna. Like we're, yep. we're doing the hot and cold thing. Um, my most recent thing was a grounding mat, a uh, grounding sheet, yep. sleeping on the grounding I'm sheet. <laughs> uh, that, that was a noticeable, noticeable difference in just yeah. sleep quality. Um, 
and even like a a very noticeable like i feel like i'm carrying around less stress less tension uh from the grounding mat um and then um you may already be into this but my uh my wife health coach and now my sons are all using the apollo nero which Mm -hmm. is a wristband that vibrates Mm -hmm. um and it has different vibration modes like an unwind mode or a calm mode or a focus mode and I haven't quite bit into that one as a habit, but, uh, but they certainly, they certainly swear by it. Um, yeah, Yeah, I'm, I'm a little obsessed with breath work too. So I'll do, you know, I'll do breath, breath work in the morning, you know, kind of different energy boost things that I did Wim Hof for, you know, probably four Mm -hmm. years, five years. And then there's some good, you know, breath work exercises that you can do uh you know before you're going to bed too just to kind of you know get your get your mind in the right space try to try to shut it down as as much as you can i mean if you know most most people like us entrepreneurs you know we kind of always it's it's tough to shut the brain off you you always got got things running through uh through your mind but uh but yeah using those tools to just try to get get better sleep because you know if you look at it i mean obviously diet is is really important exercise is really important but but sleep as is as important as as anything else if you're not getting the right sleep you're, you're just not your health and your energy levels are going to suffer yeah 100 percent. no i love that um and you mentioned the 10x uh is easier than 2x i just looked that up that looks really cool um yeah. i just uh i just finished deep work which i loved Mm -hmm. um really talking about how to get your mind in the right state for creativity and optimal working and that's really everything we mentioned right like Mm -hmm. the the more optimized your brain is the more you can get done in a more limited amount of time and then how we sabotage that with like social media and the clutter Uh, uh, for sure yeah just so so much out there to distract us these days (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Well, man, I really appreciate the time. Uh, it was great talking to somebody from your industry. And uh, yeah, man, I, uh, I wish you the best. Thank you so much for being on. Yeah, thanks a lot, Ben. It was great. 